Greetings everyone and a warm welcome to you all to your November reading with me. Guys, we're marching on through to the end of the year very, very quickly. And I always say in my videos that it's around about now that you need to all be formatting your intentions and your values and ideas and dreams for next year, for 2018. So November can be a really important time to set these goals and boundaries and things. Now, before you, you see a little bit of a, an eclectic bunch of things going on, I thought we would try something different again for the month. Um, we are using these three cards to be a decider on which deck we actually use, as in the ace is a one, two and three. One, two and three. So we'll shuffle them now and <laughs> I think as you all know I'm not the world's best shuffler. But that's fine, we will, I have no idea what these are order are in are now, and I'm going to pick one card just from the top, and that will denote what deck we are going to use. And Scorpio, this is your reading. So happy birthday to all the Scorpios out there about to either enter into their birthday zone, or into uh, next month when your birthday is as well. You got the number one, which means we are using this deck on the left. So we can put that away and we can shuffle these two to the side as well. We are going to be doing four cards, um, which I will shuffle right now with your intention. So again, this is a little more shuffling than usual. So just bear with me and sort of, while you are waiting on your cards, sit down and think of some of these intentions that I've mentioned about. So this is for Scorpio for November. Scorpio for November. first card relates to love and relationships, the second one is finances and career, the third one is home, the fourth one is health. These are such beautiful cards to look at. And we have one final card from this deck which is the James Van Pra Journey card deck. This is going to be something for you to consider one way or another. It's something that you need to be aware of in the month and it could be an overriding or underlying um, factor for you to uh, ponder upon, meditate on or think about. Scorpio for November. Regret. Okay, let's move into your reading and see what we are actually looking at and what we're talking about. The first card up on the top left is number seven and it's community. Now this would often remind me of the three of cups actual in the normal traditional tarot with the three girls there. And this is about love and relationships and the word on the card is community. So for some of you, you might be involved in quite a social month coming up in November with various meetings of friends and outings. Social events is quite often on the cards with this particular message and energy going on here. And it often relates to female energy. So for any of you that are guys out there watching, you may be spending the time, uh, some of your time around female energy. This could potentially be new love interests even. So some of you there is love in the air and there's possible romance and the meeting of new people. With others of you it could be that you are spending time in your community of friends or associates or people that you know and that it's a happier time. So it's something about gaiety, conviviality and also the joining together of people to make things happen. So for some of you it might be something like an event transpires that's brought about through two or three people and it could be the meeting of someone new. Anyhow, your relationship sector looks really positive for November. It looks as though there are new people coming on board. Some of them are definitely females. So for 
Others of you out there, this could be new groups of friends coming into your life, like you might start a new job and you suddenly meet new friends. You could go on a trip and meet new friends. And there might be three really good friends going somewhere together as well. The number three could be symbolic and so could the number seven. So a really nice way for you, birthday bunch, to start your reading. The second card is the sun. And again, this is one of the most benevolent cards of the deck. It's one that everyone loves to see in their reading. And I think also the depiction on this card is so beautiful and warm and nurturing as well. I'll wind it in a little bit so that you can see it a little clearer. Um, it's a, the same messages as the normal tarot sun. It embellishes growth and nurture and prosperity and positiveness to all aspects of your life but this card in particular is around finances and career so to, to use a sort of a, a blunt um, saying it looks like there's sunny activity over your finances and career so who could ask for more if some of you have been in a place where you have had a hard time with finances or there haven't been enough of it November could be the month to set your intentions around receiving more money for the year coming up as well. Because this is also for you guys, this is the, your birthday month. So even more important is your intention setting. And even more powerful is the fact that it's cyclically your birthday. So it's like you guys have a double whammy. When we have a birthday every year, we very much are given the ability to connect with our soul's reason for why we've come in. And oftentimes if we meditate enough or if we spend time alone or if we focus on our subconscious or our um, spiritual side, we can make those connections with what we're really meant to be doing and the steps we're meant to be taking in the future. So by allowing you to set your intentions for 2018 at the same time as connecting with your birthday energy, you could come up with some powerfully positive steps for directions for next year. And that card, the sun, is so um, benevolent and it's so positive and prosperous in many many ways but this card is particularly talking about finances and career so if any of you are wanting career changes focus on it m imagine it feel it bring it into this plane into this di dimension if some of you are wanting change whether it be a promotion or a new job feel it imagine it bring it into this dimension it's all of those things that help perpetuate your movement forward so, you know, lovely two cards to begin with. The third card is around the home. Um, so this is home would also cover off relationships and just your general day-to-day -day life, if you like. So this one here is card number six, and it's contract. And six is often about the, the home life. It's often about our relationships we have with close people in our lives and how we are living at home. Are we in a harmonious, well-balanced home or are we seeking to shift? The Interesting, the contracts there, it can literally be the signing of a contract. Some of you may be purchasing a new home or selling one or moving into a place where you are signing a lease as a document um, to move into a new digs, you know. Some of you could become landlords and you are signing off for new tenants. Any of these type of contractual obligations could be happening. So it could also be the uplifting of a mortgage through a bank. That's the signing of contracts. This could also come down to, for some of you, something like uh, a legacy or a will that is being read because that's a contractual obligation as well. Some of you may find that you are moving in with other people like flatmates and there are contracts in place about how you behave or who has to do what, yada yada and so on. Whatever it is, it feels as though there are some rules being put in place for you all around your home life. So it feels either as if there's, some of you there might be a tightening up, like someone might be saying, now listen here, you've got to do it this way and blah 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 and we have to set this aside and that aside and Razzmatazz. It's as if there's a plan in place. There's something about your home life that is being structured 
or restructured with a plan in place, which I also think is really good. I notice the scales in the background and they're nice and evenly balanced and underneath are books. And again, this comes to mind that we're thinking of um, you know, rules and doing things the right way and in balance. So if there has been unbalance like discord or disharmony in any of your homes, whether that be in personal relationships or even in the physical building that you're living in, more balance could be coming. Now this could be due to rulings, so we're also talking court rulings here. Some of you have been going through things like um, like here in New Zealand we have a really big problem with leaky houses and there are a lot of homes that are being um, going through the court process to see who's paying for the damages done to the homes. And there are also many, many properties that are being subdivided and land being sold off so that other homes can be built on it. So it feels to me as if wherever you're living around the world there's something along these lines as well. Your home is changing due to contracts and, and cutting up of things and moving things around. And I don't think it's a bad thing, I think it will take you forward and I think you will gain from it in a positive way. And as I say, if it's not physical with the land or your house, then it's at the emotional level with the people involved. We come, I'll move all these cards a little bit closer in so that you can get a good look at them. We come down to this bottom card and this is your health card and you got anxiety. So, you know, we are in fairly tumultuous times with a lot of action going on and we have a lot of planetary movement. We've had it since 2011, I think. We're going through the outer planets, moving through various, you know, difficult sectors of our life. And these times are sent to challenge us and they're sent to teach us about lessons that we're learning. And often when we go through times of difficulty, we find one of the first things that crops up is anxiety. Most of all of us have it. Sometimes we're not aware of the anxiety. It might be often interceded with um, depression or other various mental health energies. I've suffered from anxiety for many, many years, and when I was younger, it was almost crippling. So it was, um, it was panic attacks that were very extreme. So for any of you out there that are going through times of anxiety or nervousness or feeling unsure about the future of your life or the planet or, or relationships or your ability to live on the planet, know that everything changes, that nothing stays the same. And that is the most important thing. So if you feel you're locked in a certain place at a certain time or reason, it does not stay this way forever. It moves on. It changes. And you just have to focus on something outside of yourself to relieve the anxiety. Anxiety is when we are afraid of the future. Depression is fear, is involved with the past, anxiety is tied up to the future. So instead of moving yourself too far into the future, you come back into the present. And this, of course, is what mindfulness is all about. So when you are in something like a panic attack or anxiety, you focus on the nearest thing that you can, whatever it is, something as silly as even a crystal and you pick it up and you start going oh my god right so it's purple how many sides does it have uh, what shape is it I wonder what crystal it is what meanings could it have and instantly you've removed yourself from the place of the anxiety and you've taken your thought into another subject and that anxiety slowly abates and the other thing that I used to use all the time for myself was, this will not beat me. I will regain balance, you know. So I, I hope that m me telling you about my own personal experiences there gives anyone out there suffering from anxiety some help and understanding that it does pass. I can tell you now, it's not easy. It was a very crippling time and I was determined it would not beat me. And I know that you get through to the other side. It's hard, hard work. You can't give up on anything. but it, And it takes time. But you do get there. 
So the other card that popped in for you guys is this one here, and I said it you needed to be something to be aware of for the month. This one says regret, and it's very orangey coloured, so that takes me very much to the sacral um, chakra area of the body, which is our creative zone. It's where we get all of our ability to find creativeness in our life, to become um, free-flowing, to be out of fear, to be non-afraid, to take the steps forward and to plan things. So I think the colour's really symbolic for you and really relative as well. Now the words on the card are, I know that I cannot change the past. So this again could be related to your health and it's about letting go of regret and knowing that what is done is done. Most importantly, did you learn something from it? If you learnt from it, then it was a lesson that probably had to occur and it will take you forward at a greater level knowing what you've learned and you will be stronger for it and we have all this lovely orange as well allowing that strength to come back through so focus on your sacral chakra area focus on orange for the month utilize it as a color to wear and orange foods to eat focus on letting go of regret which will help you let go of anxiety as well because i said before the two are often tied up together and when you do that, you will bring more balance into your life at all levels and you will find much more prosperity and happiness and gaiety and, uh, you know, social interaction. So there you are, Scorpio. I hope you have really enjoyed your birthday reading. I wish for you all a wonderful, happy birthday month. Many successes, great happiness and love from within yourself that extends out as well. So have a wonderful November and a wonderful intention setting period for the month and the year ahead. Take care everyone, much love, namaste.